welcome back. The objectives of this particular video are to distinguish between esters and amides. Um, this will be a little bit of review from your organic chemistry. It's really important to be able to distinguish between these, especially if you're going to be taking exams like the MCAT or something like that. Okay. Also in this video, we're going to learn the mechanism of a serine esterase. The particular serine esterase we're going to be dealing with is called acetylcholinesterase. Okay. And one thing I'm going to try to um, help you with is not to memorize these mechanisms, but be able to understand them. Hopefully pretty soon you're getting to know pretty well these nucleophilic acyl substitutions. They're one of the most common reactions in all of biochemistry. And also we want to prove similarity among all of serine hydrolases, both serine proteases and serine esterases. Welcome back. I know what I said in the last video. We were, I said we were going to look at the mechanism of lipase. We can come back and do that, but what I, what I want to do is something a little bit simpler than, than the lipase. I want to look at the hydrolysis of this molecule right here. The molecule that I have drawn up here at the top right, this molecule is called acetylcholine. Acetylcholine. And you may have heard of this molecule, whether you've taken anatomy and physiology, physiology, um, even biochemistry, maybe your teacher has mentioned it. Acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter. Uh, for instance, acetylcholine is released by the vagus nerve, cranial nerve 10, on the sinoatrial node, and it causes a slowing of the heart rate. Another example of its use is it's used... Um, at the neuromuscular junction to initiate muscle contraction. In the prior example, it's used as an inhibitory molecule. In the latter, it's used as an excitatory. So it has various functions. And of course, the actual function depends on the receptor, not on the molecule itself. Okay, But just like you have to have a way to biosynthesize the enzyme, so too you also have to have a way to terminate the response. And since there are no reuptake methods for acetylcholine, the primary way of getting rid of the response is by destroying the molecule itself. Okay, And the mechanism by which we destroy the molecule is through this enzyme I have written here at the bottom. The name of the enzyme is acetylcholinesterase. This is a hydrolytic enzyme, and it has virtually the same mechanism as all proteases, except for, remember with proteases, we were dealing with amide linkages. Notice what our functional group is here. Our functional group is instead an ester. But you can effectively treat the ester the same way you can treat an amide. Okay? That's what makes these carboxylic acids really fun to deal with, is because you can virtually treat them in the same way mechanistically. Okay? So just kind of follow along and, and we'll do the mechanism. Okay? So just like in the case of the protease, um, the first step in the mechanism is going to be deprotonation of the serine residue. So do note that this is a serine esterase. In fact, all of these enzymes that we're dealing with can be brought into a, a conglomerate of a group called serine hydrolases. Okay, obviously caspases are not serine hydrolases, but in terms of most digestive proteases, complement proteins, and coagulation enzymes, these belong to a conglomerate of proteins called serine hydrolases. Okay, also in that group are things like phospholipase C, so so um, fat lipases, things like that. It's a large group of enzymes called serine hydrolases. This is one of the members of the serine esterases, which is a subgroup under serine hydrolases. Serine proteases is another subgroup under serine hydrolases. Therefore, serine proteases and serine esterases are both subgroups under serine hydrolases. Okay? But in any case, the first step of the mechanism is deprotonation of the serine residue. And then these electrons right here come out and attack the carbonyl carbon, generating a tetrahedral intermediate. Okay? 
And just like in the case of the protease, that tetrahedral intermediate is going to collapse. In doing so, the alkoxide electrons are going to reform this pi bond, and they're going to kick off the leaving group, which in this case is going to be choline. Okay, So choline is our leaving group, and as it leaves, it's going to pick up the proton from the histidine residue, regenerating the resting state of the histidine. Okay, So now what we have is we have this intermediate called an acyl enzyme intermediate and I went ahead and put this E here for enzyme just to denote that that serine residue is part of the enzyme okay over here we can call this our tetrahedral intermediate okay and remember that tetrahedral intermediates those are our sp3 hybridized geometry intermediates whereas with our acyl intermediates those are going to be sp2 hybridized right Okay, now in this step of the mechanism, water is allowed into the active site. Okay, so water is going to be allowed in, and the histine, histidine residue, which is newly deprotonated, is going to deprotonate water, and effectively the hydroxide is going to attack the carbonyl carbon, and we will have a second nucleophilic acyl substitution, except for the fact that in this mechanism we're dealing with an ester, not an amide. And of course we generate a tetrahedral intermediate. Okay. Now, again, just like in the first acyl substitution, the tetrahedral intermediate will collapse. And in doing so, these alkoxide electrons will reform the pi bond and serine will be ejected as the leaving group. Okay? And as serine leaves, it's going to pick up that extra proton from the histidine, regenerating the resting state of the histidine residue in the active site. Now, one thing I do want to mention is keep in mind that just like in the case of our protease, there exists also an aspartate residue in the active site, right? an aspartate residue that's able to hold that histidine in a proper orientation, right? This proton has a partial positive charge, and it's able to interact electrostatically with the aspartate residue. And just keep in mind that that aspartate residue is present throughout all of this. Okay, So I just wanted to verify that as well. Now, in the process of doing this, we generate initially this molecule right here, which is called acetic acid. Okay. But acetic acid has a pKa that is far less than water, and so a proton transfer then ensues, in which case we generate acetate, and the equilibrium really should be written like this. Oops. The equilibrium should be written where it drastically favors the production of acetate. Okay. Acetic acid will not really exist at physiological pH. In fact, I believe it's approximately a thousand times more acetate than acetic acid. So the good thing about these, uh, these carboxylic acid derivatives, amides and esters, is mechanistically, in terms of these esterases and proteases and, in general, hydrolases, you can pretty much treat them the exact same way. And mechanistically, they are identical. So that's a good thing. It simplifies a lot of things. Instead of memorizing a Instead of memorizing a whole bunch of mechanisms, if you understand how to apply it, you can apply this to a whole bunch of enzymes. And acetylcholinesterase is not the only enzyme that's hydrolyzing an ester bond. Another example of, of I'm sorry if you can hear that in the background. Anyways, another example of an ester bond that gets hydrolyzed is an enzyme like phospho or phospholipases. And of course, within that, you have A1, A2, and C. But the whole point is that phospholipases also have ester linkages. And these are also members of the class of enzymes known as serine hydrolases. And within serine hydrolases, we have serine proteases and we have serine esterases. Okay, so we have serine esterases and we also have serine proteases. So I hope this video gave you a little bit of intuition on a little bit of variation of the serine hydrolases, in which case we're dealing with esterases. But the key point here is that you can effectively treat them the exact same way that you treat serine proteases. See you in the next video.